cleaning and disinfection and essential. State the properties and functions of detergents and disinfectants. Name the areas and items that require disinfection. Say why effective management of cleaning techniques is important. And lastly, give reasons why cleaning schedules are required. Hazards from cleaning include cross-contamination from the redistribution of the contamination, chemical contamination including tainting from the chemicals that have been used, and the failure to remove or destroy microorganisms. And we'll look at disinfectants later on. Disinfectants are used to remove or destroy microorganisms. It could well be that the disinfectant is out of date, could be too weak, too strong, perhaps it's stale, perhaps it's been used all day without changing. And the reasons for cleaning include it reduces the risk of food poisoning, removes bacteria and food on which the bacteria grows, is to enable disinfection, in other words you must clean before you disinfect. It aids pest control, it removes food so that pests are discouraged and easier to see, it removes physical contaminants, it removes dirt and grease, and it increases customer confidence and promotes a favourable image. Other reasons for cleaning include that a few customer complaints, complies with the law, it provides a pleasant and safe environment, there is less breakdown of equipment and is less machine wear and damage. Cleaning is the systematic application of energy to a surface or substance with the intention of removing dirt. In fact, it removes dirt, grease and grime, etc. or biofilms. In order for the disinfection process to actually kill bacteria, you have to clean first in order to remove the biofilms, the grease and the dirt, where the bacteria might be harboring underneath. It's no good just trying to disinfect first. You must clean first. And the phrase there shows clean as you go, which literally does what it says on the can. Clean up after yourself there and then. We will look at shadow cleaning, which is slightly different, but clean as you go is systematically clean up after yourself without leaving it for anybody else to clean. There are various energies involved in cleaning, and they include kinetic energy, and that's split down into three subsections. The one is physical kinetic energy, and that's basically elbow grease, using your own physical strength to clean. Then is mechanical cleaning, which is the use of equipment, such as scarifiers and scrubbers, and the use of turbulence. Now this is used a lot in industries such as dairies and drinks manufacturers where they clean in place and they use the turbulence of the liquid to actually do the cleaning within the fixed tubing. You've also got thermal, which is the use of hot water, and then chemical, the use of detergents. The definition of a detergent is a chemical used to remove dirt, grease and food particles and that's all it's meant to do. It's not meant to kill bacteria. We'll cover that when we look at disinfection. The three main characteristics to consider with detergents. First of all is the surfactancy, which is the wetting power. So in other words, the sticking power, which actually stick to products. Surfactants may be anionic, which is positive, or cationic, which are negative, And they should not be mixed. Another characteristic is dispersion allow the dispersion of fat globules and food globules within the liquid and the emulsive action which actually holds particles together. Detergents can come in different forms such as powders, liquids, gels and foams. And with dirt or soiling they are split into two categories organic and inorganic. Organic include things like fats, proteins and sugars Inorganic include things like water scale and milk stone. It doesn't show this on the slide, but another word which you'll find in the textbook and the definition of saponification. This is the process of making soap, for example by boiling vegetable oils with an alkaline chemical such as caustic soda. Soap is anionic, therefore it's positively charged. You might also come across the word sequestrant, this counteracts the effect of water hardness and it prevents scum. And the general characteristics of detergents should include the following. 
They should be non-toxic, non-tainting, non-irritant and non-corrosive, free rinsing and non-scum forming and hard water and soluble in water. Cost effective cleaning, always choose the correct chemical, apply at the optimum temperature and concentration, allow time to function, use it with correct equipment. Cleaning on its own does not kill bacteria but may remove most. Remember cleaning equipment can be a source of contamination. Disinfection is the removal of bacteria to a safe level. It does not usually destroy bacterial spores. It usually follows cleaning and it can combine with cleaning using a sanitizer. And the different types of disinfection first of all includes heat. Dry heat destroys cells by dehydration and oxidation. Hot water, for example wet heat causes coagulation of cell proteins. The temperature we tend to use is 82 degrees Celsius for 30 seconds or 88 degrees Celsius for 15 to 90 seconds and also the use of steam. Other products we can use include mainly chemicals including bleach which is hypochlorite. This oxidizes proteins, is cheap, it has a wide spectrum of activity, is unaffected by hard water. The problem is it's pungent, it's corrosive, there's no surfactancy and it's inactivated by organic soiling. Other chemicals include QACs or quartz, quartry and ammonium compounds. These are safe, odorless, stable and non-corrosive. They are inactivated by hard water, organic material and some plastics. Others include amphoterics, alcohols, which we class as a dry disinfection, bigonides and iodophores. There are only three areas that require disinfection within a food premises. First of all, food contact surfaces, for example food utensils, equipment, food conveyor belts, Hand contact surfaces, such as touch points, for example, handles on drawers, handles on fridges and freezers. And lastly, cleaning materials and equipment, but don't leave soaking overnight. Other places or areas to consider using disinfectant would be fruit and vegetables, when they have been consumed raw, and the hands, but only when essential. Again, health and safety in mind here, don't tend to use alcoholic gel or bacteria size rather than ordinary soap or water because that can over prolonged use cause dermatitis. Sanitizing is cleaning and disinfection combined in one chemical and the product we tend to use for that are the quats or quacks, quaternary ammonium compounds. Always read the manufacturer's instructions on disinfectants the presence of food residues, dirt, grease or detergent may prevent effective disinfection. Effectiveness of disinfection is determined by bacteriological monitoring or swabbing and ATP which is adenosine triphosphate which actually checks on the protein content of the swab surface. It's not undertaken by visual inspection. When choosing a disinfectant you should look for the following characteristics. It should be broad-based, non-toxic, non-tainting, non-irritant, odorless and tasteless, not affect equipment adversely, cost-effective, able to kill the target microorganisms required, and to act in the contact time available, which can vary. The choice of disinfectant depends on several factors, including the amount of soil in present, the type of cleaning equipment used, the water hardness, contact time available, the different types of microorganisms to be destroyed, the type of surface, the smoothness of it, uh, the imperviousness of it, stability of the product, the likelihood of taint, temperature of application, toxicity, effect on personnel from a health and safety point of view, the ionic nature of the detergent used before disinfection never mix anionic and cationic. The method of application always use a fresh solution of adequate strength. Solution of adequate strength and performance on clean surfaces. 
There is a process known as a six stage cleaning operation. So let's have a look at the first three stages. The first stage is pre-clean, such as sweeping, wiping, scraping, pre-rinsing or pre-soaking. Secondly, it's the main clean, using a detergent to loosen the main soil in. And the third stage is an intermediate rinse. This is the removal of loose dirt, neutralization or removal of residue and to wash away the detergent which is a chemical and we don't want to leave any chemical residues on the uh, surfaces. The fourth stage is disinfection. This is the destruction of residual microorganisms if required. Followed by a final rinse. This is the removal of disinfectant residues which might not always be required. And lastly dry in the removal of the final rinse water. Air drying is preferred and stored then to prevent contamination. If you do use paper towels or tea towels to dry the items you've just washed, that could reintroduce contamination. There's also a four stage cleaning process and this is where you combine a detergent with a disinfectant to turn it into a sanitizer. Again starting off with a pre-clean such as sweeping, wiping, scraping, pre-rinsing or pre-soaking. Then sanitizing, which is doing the job of a detergent, which removes the main soil in dirt, grease and grime. And then the disinfectant within the sanitizer does its job in destruction of any residual microorganisms. The third stage then is the rinse, which is the removal of all sanitizing residues. And finally dry in, the removal of final rinse water. Again, air drying is preferred, not using tea towels or paper towels to reintroduce contamination. And then stored to prevent contamination. So they, again, they could be covered with greaseproof paper, etc. to stop any recontamination with dust and other particles. Other methods of washing include the two sink method, is similar to the six and four stage methods. First of all, start off with a pre-clean, then a main clean in hot water between 45 and 55 degrees Celsius, an intermediate rinse, a disinfection of a chemical around about 65 degrees Celsius. This can be hot water, for example, at 82 degrees Celsius for 30 seconds. Final rinse if chemical is used instead of hot water and lastly air drying and inverted storage. Mechanical dishwashing. Machines are effective at disinfection as well as cleaning. The procedure is as follows. Pre-clean, scrape and rinse. Pack machine efficiently. Wash between 49 and 60 degrees Celsius. Rinse cycle between 82 and 88 degrees Celsius. And this rinse cycle is the disinfection cycle also. Then remove the racks and allow to air dry and inverted storage. Now we looked at clean as you go earlier on, and literally clean as you go is clean up after yourself there and then, don't leave any mess for anybody else. It promotes a favourable image, it prevents cross-contamination, and it makes a place hygienically clean and safe to work in. Now the other type of clean is using a cleaning schedule. This must be clearly and concisely written. In other words, it's a documented procedure. Clean as you go is not a documented procedure. It's something that's done naturally. But a cleaning schedule is a documented procedure. The entire premises should be covered by a cleaning schedule. And all equipment and services should be included. Written schedules should specify the surface that needs to be cleaned. In other words, what is to be cleaned? How is it to be cleaned? The method used. When is it to be cleaned? When and how much time is to be allowed? And also, what standard is required? The next thing we need to take into consideration is the person. Who cleans it? What protective clothing should be worn? What precautions should be taken? What specific risks are identified? What monitoring is used? For example, bacteriological? Who monitors the standards and records? And here we look at the assessment of cleaning, either by visual means or the use of swabs. 
And the other thing we need to take into account is the chemical that we are using. For example, what chemicals are to be used, the type and the amount, what dilution or dosing, the contact time and the storage requirements for the chemical. The equipment used for cleaning can include such things as foams and gel applicators, dosing aids, pressure jet cleaners, mechanical aids such as scrubbers and scarifiers, these are heavy floor cleaners with built-in detergent tanks, mops, disposable cloths and brushes, and also we need to consider the storage facilities for these equipment. On the safety of cleaning, always follow the manufacturer's instructions. Wear protective clothing as necessary, store chemicals safely away from the food area, always use the proper container, never dispense into, for example, food or drinks containers, place safety, safety cones on floor if wet, never mix chemicals, and after cleaning, clean and disinfect the cleaning equipment and wash your hands. CIP or cleaning in place is the circulation of non-foaming detergents and disinfectants through process equipment in the assembled state. It's specifically used in dairies, breweries and potable liquid manufacturers. It uses a combination of turbulence, heat and chemical energies to attain a satisfactory result. Careful design with CIP in mind is essential. A typical CIP sequence consists of five steps. First of all, pre-rinse, which removes gross soil. Detergent circulation, removes residual debris and dissolves grease and soil in. An intermediate rinse with cold water. A disinfectant circulation, which destroys the remaining organisms. And a final rinse with cold water. And finally, let's look at the cleaning and disinfection of a meat slicer. This should only be attempted by trained staff over the age of 18. First of all, switch off the appliance and unplug. Set the slice of thickness control to zero. Dismantle the equipment, pre-clean. Use dishwasher for removed parts where possible. Otherwise, use hot water at approximately 55 degrees Celsius and detergent. Use a clean cloth and brush. The blade should be cleaned with hot water and detergent in situ or adjacent to the slicer. If removed, a blade carrier should be used and care taken at all times. Disinfect in second sink or with chemical disinfectant. Allow appropriate contact time. Reassemble. Disinfect with spray any parts that have been handled during reassembly. Check guards and test machine carry out any adjustments. Switch off, unplug and cover with a clean cloth or similar, such as greaseproof paper. And then the supervisors to check. And with cleaning contractors, these may be required occasionally for a deep clean. They are responsible for dismantling equipment, the use of dangerous chemicals, the cleaning of ventilation ducts and fryers, and the cleaning of difficult areas, for example the bottom of lift shafts, and dumb waiters, and cleaning anything really from above shoulder height. So that's the end of lecture 10, cleaning and disinfection. And the key points, we looked at the effect of cleaning and disinfection and the fact that it's essential in any food premises, the fact that cleaning presents significant hazards when carried out badly, it should reduce the risk of contamination, Staff involved in cleaning must be trained. Disinfect food and hand contact surfaces. Disinfect cleaning equipment regularly and always after use. Good cleaning schedules helps ensure effective cleaning and assist in due diligence. And effective monitoring is essential to ensure safe food.